Okay, good evening everyone. It's uh, Derek O'Dwyer here and uh, tonight with Kevin Barry and myself we're going to take you through how to get out of debt in your business and in your life. We hope to provide you with some inspiration this evening, we hope to provide you with some ideas and we hope to provide you with um, a kind of a roadmap to get you started at least. If you have any questions throughout this seminar tonight, uh, the, I guess the best thing to do is to type them in to, on the panel on your right and we'll get to them throughout the night and we'll also take questions and answers at the end. But what we're going to cover tonight specifically is we're going to say, we're going to give you the five steps to get you on the road to recovery, the five things that you must do first. We're then going to provide you with four tools to assist you. Now these are very simple tools but they're the simple things that people don't do. After that, we're going to give you the three keys to e immediate implementation, as in what's going to kickstart you, what's going to actually kind of get you um, doing what you should have been doing possibly two, three years ago. Then we're going to explain at the end how both Kevin and I work with businesses and with individuals on improving their personal financial situations. And at the end of this evening, we're going to make you a very special offer, which we hope you take advantage of, and it's for the people that actually attend on the webinar tonight only. So I'll go through that at the end, but I think it's a special offer that you'll get great value from. And I'll give you an example at the end of how it actually works for people as well. Okay, for those of you that um, uh, don't know me, uh, my name is uh, Derek O'Dwyer. I'm a business coach with Action Coach. Action Coach is the world's number one business coach and franchise. I've been an Action Coach since 2002, so I have eight years experience working with business owners um, throughout Ireland. I'm a global award winner, I'm a European award winner, I'm an Irish award winner, and I'm also an Irish Franchising Award nominee. I understand the power of networking, I love sales and marketing, and I teach my clients sales and marketing as much as I can. I'm obviously a business owner as well myself, and I'm also involved in other businesses, and I've provided numerous uh, training uh, events around the country. So I'll hand you over now to Kevin, who will uh, explain who he is and why he um, is so good at what he does. Hello, Derek. Nice to hear from you there over the airwaves. Uh, Hello, Kevin, Kevin Barry here. <coughs> good evening. Uh, Kevin Barry here. I'm, a, I'm what they say, a boring chartered accountant. Went through the usual things, school and that. But I joined Price Waterhouse uh, when I was 21. I trained three years in Dublin under very good bosses. Transferred to the Cayman Islands, where it turned out Charlie Hawhey had hidden all the money. And I was there at that time. Uh, came home for a hol holiday, and 15 years later, um, I'm still here. I just happened to coincide in 1994 with Ireland turning around. Um, since then, the practice has grown very significantly. And uh, through various relationships, um, I started a couple of other businesses, which have all gone well. Uh, they were going well anyway. And did a number of property developments and identified about six years ago that the whole market was going to end and started to get out of it. And I see, I didn't realize you put Air Crash Survivor on there, Derek. I thought you were joking about that. But um, except for that, I would have been in the clear. As it turned out, um, when I got out of hospital and stuff like this, I'd been through such a hemorrhaging of business that as things got worse in Ireland, I, I found myself used to it. Because when you're absent from your business for 18 months unexpectedly, the problems that came down the track for all of my clients, I already had kind of dealt with them, you know. So uh, I'm very focused on business. I actually are, are addicted to it. And uh, the main thing is if you can focus on getting money in, keeping an eye on it, and making sure you're not smothering in debt, it actually can be highly enjoyable. So day to day, that's what we do with our clients. I'll push okay, it on back to you now, thanks. Derek. Okay, thanks very much, Kevin. Okay, so we've got to get started now, and I suppose that the main thing uh, that we want to cover today is about understanding what debt actually is. And uh, we want to really um, get people to understand the difference between good debt and bad debt. We want to get people to understand the difference between business debt and uh, personal debt. And we're going to take you through what to focus on first and, wh and also where we need to be in the future. So Kevin is going to take us through the different types of debt that exist right now in, 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 a, in people's personal lives and also the different types of debt that, it, that happen in business. So Kevin, can you take that away? Yeah, the people get confused day, day in, day out. I mean, they use their credit card for buying petrol, uh, going to the cinema, buying the meal this evening, 
and perhaps you know purchasing a new machine for for their job or their workplace. And I'm specifically talking about the self-employed when I say that last part. The main thing is personal debt is, is obviously the items to do with with item with running up debts either on your credit card or leases or loans just to do with your day-to-day -day living, such as you borrow money to buy the car just to go to work in, or you borrow money to go on holiday, or to buy your Christmas presents, or you might just go to your mother every now and again and take a loan offer to help you buy a house, or to pay off the builder who did up the kitchen. That's personal debt because it's not working for you really, and uh, I want to come in very quick on one particular point. Um, your house is personal debt. Now, some people differ on this one, but I, I would be quite strong on it, even if you think of the word mortgage. And uh, to be kind of funny about it, just break it in two. The word mort in, in French means death, and gauge is, is in French means weight, apparently. So it's like a death weight. But anyone I know who's gone broke, and uh, this is why this is about personal debt, anyone that I know who's gone broke, what has killed them is, is having their house taken off them. So you don't want to have your house in debt, and that is, has to be the number one goal at all times, and protecting your assets, and that's further on in this. So personal debt is running up debts to do with just living your day-to-day -day life, and you don't want that. You want to have zero personal debt eventually, and we do focus on getting rid of that within seven years or less. Business debt, I call that good debt. Personal debt is bad debt. Business debt, it's not borrowing everything, but it's certainly borrowing money in a way that purchases, purchases items that make you money even if it's setting up an overdraft in order to pay an excellent employee or an excellent recruit who's, who's superb at winning business for you, or you're borrowing money just to train the people to be better at what they do. That's good debt. Borrowing money to lease uh, a new premises or to purchase a new base piece of equipment or to invest in software, all of that is good debt because if it's done right with the right decisions, uh, it will be a correct decision to bring in money in your sales that will pay for everything beneath your sales, like the expenses or the cost of sales. So, so business debt is good debt as long as it's you know properly weighed up. You're not paying too much for anything. But anything to do with your personal life going into, into debt on that is, is 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 bad, and that has to be got rid of, and that's where you start. But we'll we'll come back to that. Back to you, Derek. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Well, what we want to do first of all, I guess most people who have registered for this seminar tonight have said they wanted to focus a little bit more on personal debt than on business debt. So we're going to do that. But we'll cover business as well as we go through. But the, the main thing that we find with people who are in personal debt is that they don't, they stick their head in the sand. They stop opening the letters in the bank and they stop opening the letters that come in that have a typed name on them full stop. So what we are pleading with people to do right now is to establish where exactly you're, you're at. How much do you owe? What type of debt is it? Have you defaulted on any of the actual payments that you've, you should be making every month so far? And what default level are you at? Are you considered in default by the financial institution that you've borrowed the money from? Do you understand what the implications of those defaults are on you and on your property and, as Kevin mentioned before, on your personal home? And have you defaulted on your personal home mortgage? And I guess the most important thing we'd like to come to now, right now in terms of where you're at, have you communicated your situation, your present financial situation, to the people that have lent you money? Because if you haven't, that's your number one um, debt, um, that's the killer, killer blow. You have to stay in communication with them. And the minute you stop communicating with them, that's the minute they, get, they start to get worried, and they start to panic, and they start to come after you. So the first thing we need to do is, is establish where we're at now and um, kind of draw a line under it. After that, we want to actually kind of set you on the roadmap. So we need to say, where do we need to be? So what's, what's the gap at the moment between what, what level of debt we have and our income or our earning ability? So what survival mean to us? So if you've currently got a outgoings per month of 3,000 euro and you've got an income coming in every month of 2,500 euro, um, survival is an increase in, of 500 euro. That will, that will make you survive. We then say to people, okay, what other sources of cash do you have what, what, that are available to you? Have you looked at other streams of income? Have you actually looked at your business to say, is there, could my business be doing better? Or if you don't have a business, have you looked at how you're working your job? Is there a, is there a promotion available to you? Is there ways for you to earn increased revenue in your job? 
and what have you done about it? When we use the word resources, then we say, okay, who are the people around you that can actually help you? Who do you know that can either offer you advice or who can offer you guidance or who can offer you a break or who can help you free up some of your debt? So you need to start building your team around you. For those of you in business, we then actually ask you, okay, what business are you actually in? And in my own situation, when I'm working with business owners, I often find that um, some of them are in businesses that don't have a long-term future. Or they're, they're in a business that's caught up in the whole uh, downturn that we're in at the moment, trying to sell to markets that just have simply dried up. So an example of that would be you know, people supplying into the construction industry, hoping that the whole thing is going to turn around and kick on again. Now it's not. It's not going to do that for the next two, three, four, or five years. So we're saying to them, okay, you're putting all this effort into this beast of a business. Should you be putting some effort into an additional or different source of business? And like I said before, we then need to look at what different revenue streams could you have. So uh, what we're saying to people is start making a plan and start establishing where exactly you're at and where do you need to be. We're saying, okay, we can't blame the past. We can't hide from the facts. We have to take responsibility and we have to start making important decisions. I was talking to a client this evening and he told me, he's not a client, he's a, a guy that I don't work with, and he was saying that he'd let two or three people go and unfortunate as it was, he had to make these tough decisions in order to keep the business alive. And because he did that a month ago when it was really tough to do it, he's going to be in a position after Christmas to take these people back on again and grow his business again. Had he let it go too far, he would have had to actually close down the business because it would run out of cash. Okay, so the first thing is what do we need to focus on first is get a good idea of where you're at and get a good idea of where you can get some help from. Okay, so what I guess our approach, both Kevin and I, our approach is pretty much the IMF approach. That's really what we're kind of suggesting to people is that, okay, the IMF are in the country right now, they're making tough decisions. So if you consider yourself as being the basket case, and someone else is going to come in to tell you what to do, they're going to be brutally honest with you. They want you to be honest with yourself. They want you to be honest about your business and about your revenue streams. They're going to force you to make tough decisions. And tough decisions could be some type of lifestyle decisions or lifestyle purchases that you make right now. So if you drew out a list of all your outgoings every month and you actually look down at them critically and said, which of these could I do without? Have you done that already? And if you haven't, why not? The one I always um, focus on is people who have taken out a Sky Sports subscription and uh, they can't make the minimum payment on their credit card every month. Okay, you don't need Sky Sports subscriptions and you especially don't need the one with the sports attachment which is going to cost you 50, 60 or 70 euro a month. 60 euro a month times 12 is nearly a thousand euro a year. Could you put that to reducing your debt? Be clear every time you actually make a decision about what the outcome of that decision will be for you. Very often people are very, very focused on what other people think of them and the impact it's going to have on other people. Now we've all been on airplanes and the first thing that they do when they do the safety announcement at the beginning is they tell you, put your own mask on first. You have to help yourself first and you have to make tough decisions that's best for you. And you have to go and make those decisions and have no regrets about them. Because if you don't do that, you'll be continually looking over your shoulder and continue worrying about what other people think of you. That time is done now. Uh, so the approach we want to take is very direct. We want people to make tough decisions that will actually help them get out of this mess. And we want to accelerate that process with them as well. I might come in on that one, Derek, with a, with a simple story from today on yeah. the IMF approach. Just, um, uh, just a conversation I had with a, with a, a business couple lately. They had about seven staff. Place, uh, is, there's a huge amount of money hitting the tills, but there, there's nothing left at the end of the day or the month or the, or the year. So um, anyway, they're working themselves to debt. You know, yet there's all these staff everywhere. So anyway, it, fo it focused on, on two clear points. One was the staff just needs to be trained how to sell in a more efficient way. They were selling the low margin stuff, which put money in the till, but they weren't selling the stuff that actually made money for the business. And um, so basically, I give them a figure every day that the, that the shop needed to bring in or else they were losing money. So they could understand that figure. And let's just say it was 2,000 euro. So they were then, then they were told to the staff, unless half of that 2,000 euro comes from the back of the shop, either hours are going to be cut or staff are going to be cut. We just haven't made that decision yet. 
So that was within the power of the of the staff to to say, well, it wasn't just getting money into the till; it was getting the right money into the till from the right areas of the shop. So that was a, a, an example of something that seems to be working actually pretty overnight with a, with a with business owners and their staff in being honest about the business. So money in the till, as everyone as everybody knows, doesn't translate to profit. It's the right type of money in the till. So yeah. uh, just and thought I'd, in, I'd interject with that little. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's good, and it, it's the same everywhere. And I, I'll give you another story as well. Uh, myself right now, again, the IMF approach. When we go into businesses, our first objective is to make those businesses profitable. In many people's minds, the, the, the idea to make it profitable is to cut costs. But there are only so many costs you can cut out of a business before the business becomes not a business anymore, but just a job for someone. So our focus initially always is to improve productivity and also improve sales overall. An example I can give you is that I'm working with a business at the moment that generates a revenue of about 8,000 euro a week. But their administrative cost on that 8,000 euro is nearly 800 euro per week. So that means on their margin of 35%, they have to generate um, nearly 3,000 euro worth of sales every week to actually just pay for the administration. That's a ridiculously high level for their business. So I'm saying to the administration team that they need to work on improving performance and get it up to 10,000. Otherwise, if they don't play ball, we then have to look and make a tough decision about the, the role they do in administration. So it's all about making tough decisions, but making everyone aware of them so that everyone knows the consequences. Okay, so we'll move swiftly on. And uh, we'll move on now to cash flow improvement strategies. And uh, the first thing we're going to cover is what exactly is cash flow. Kevin, as the accountant, can you explain that one? Well, I think everybody knows that. It's obviously much getting the money in, um, you know, in order to pay your bills. A lot of people work from overdrafts. In other words, the money isn't collected that they've billed for or that they expect to be paid for, but they're still paying their own bills, but they're paying, uh, paying it out of other people's money, namely the bank, or else, uh, or else they're not paying one of their own suppliers in order to pay the, the supplier who's shouting loudest. But, uh, you know, cash flow, if, if there was no such thing as credit or if there was no such thing as banks, we would all just be operating on a pure cash basis. You know, you can't pay the next man until you're paid yourself. That's cash flow, and that's it in simple terms. Um, the forecasting is just predicting, you know, when the, you know, the money that you're, you're expecting in is actually going to show up. And uh, that can be easy enough if you have a, a post-dated check or you have a letter of credit or you have a credit card number on file <clears throat> or you have you know, um, a direct debit originator system whereby you can put your, your hand into their bank account and get your hands on their money as long as it's there. So, you know, if you can nail down when your money's going to come in, that, that's a lot easier on you forecasting when you're going to be paying the next guy. So, I mean, that's, that's cash flow. Um, the cost reduction strategies, maybe I'll just push straight onto that one as well. Well, I'll give, give you an example of cash flow forecasting and how it works in a business. And the same can be applied to people. I was working with a client last week, not last week, last in, in October, and he knew that uh, he was he's always going to be tight for the next few months in terms of money. So we actually did our cash flow forecast. He could predict his sales pretty much to the thousand euro for the next three months. So, but he could also predict his outgoings. So by doing cash flow forecast with that particular client, we could see that he was going to run into difficulties from the 1st of December to the 10th of December, just based on when his money was coming in from his clients and based on what he had to pay out. And by doing that exercise of forecasting, which took all of 20 minutes, it enabled us to take corrective action at the beginning of October to prevent him suffering from a cash flow um, crisis right now. And it meant cutting back some payments. It also meant that we could inform people that there may be a delay in, in us paying them. But because we knew in advance, people were a lot more relaxed about it because we communicated the message to, that, to, to the suppliers. So moving on to cost reduction strategies, Kevin, I'll back to you. Oh, well, I'll go slam into the easy one, the debt one. Um, getting the interest rate down. Uh, that's the really tough one at the moment, you know. The you know, the dead money, what sucked Ireland dry was three years before now and two years before now, uh, interest rates from the European Central Bank went as high as almost 5.5%. Uh, and, and then the local bank added their percentage on top. And it was almost like an extra tax. So instead of your interest bill or repayment on your loans being, I'll just make this up, 1,000 euros a month, which is what you would take the loan at 
in the first place. So you did your deal when you bought or leased whatever premises or piece of equipment you needed um, at a certain price of that piece of equipment and a certain interest rate and a certain repayment expectation. So you kind of said, okay, I can afford that. Then the European Central Bank put up their interest rate to slow down business in Europe because we were overheating. And they slowed us down to such an extent that all the money was taken out of businesses and, and families throughout Ireland and beyond for like a three-year period. There were 17 interest rate increases in a row. That's what happened. So a uh, cost reduction strategy was, okay, they've now brought down the interest rate, but the local bank has put up their profit level on it. And, and this is where, where it really gets tough. And it's very tough when you're under financial stress. You need to go in there and say, we need it. You know, we're falling behind on our repayments because you're charging us too much. You're telling us out there to cut costs to bring in our business. We're saying to you, the bank, you've got to cut your costs as well. Now, they'll resist it, but um, it is getting through. We're about 18 months into this fight now, and um, yeah, it's, it's happening. There is interest write-offs occurring. There is arrears interest being waived, and uh, for early settlement, and that's not easy achieved, but there is ways of doing it. Uh, there is very, very significant, and I'm not going to give it away in case there's any bankers listening, but they all know there is, and we've all heard it, there are, there are and I'm, I can confirm it, there are significant write-offs occurring. So one cost reduction strategy is you need to face down your lender and uh, to say, if we achieve X in the next six months, three months, one year, you know, will you write off the following? Okay, and be brave about it. And you may not get the answer you want day one, but you need to prepare them for that coming down the tracks. So hit the hard one. Don't cut the staff wages first. Don't uh, ring up your suppliers who have supplied you loyally for years and say, can you take some of the pain? Start with your lender, because this is all about debt reduction. And um, it's got to happen there firstly. And that's on personal and, and business. So I'll, I'll leave that one out there while I go over to you, Derek, for the revenue improvement. OK. Um, I guess the main uh, revenue improvement comes primarily in terms of uh, business revenue improvement. And like, like I said before, the main revenue improvement strategies are a continued increase in uh, trying to get good sales in at the right margin. There's a race to the bottom at the moment in terms of driving down prices. And that's fine as long as your margin is protected. But if you're not protecting your margin, it's a, it's, it's a fool's game because you'll eventually go broke. The main thing is to understand what people will actually pay and understand the difference between price and value. And that's absolutely critical. If you have a business that makes a margin of 35% and you're in the habit, or you and your staff are in the habit of giving 10% discount here and there, the, the reality there is that you have to bring in an extra 50% of sales just to compensate for your 10% discount strategy. That's unforgivable in the current climate. It's also unnecessary. And it just requires people to, to think differently before they race into the whole discounting game. The other thing that most people have failed to do over the past few years is to implement a proper marketing strategy that works for them day and night. Very often people do marketing, they get busy, they stop marketing, then they, they stop being busy and they decide they need to market again. So you have a huge cyclical um, thing happening in the business where it's boom bust in the business and that's still happening today. Our policy there is that when you start marketing, you stay marketing. And when you get busy, you keep marketing, and you actually put more pressure on marketing because that's how you actually sweat the business, sweat the assets of your business, and generate real revenue for your business. So the most important thing is to a continued focus on sales and marketing. Very often at the moment, business owners are getting caught up in the busyness of their business, and they're cutting costs, and they're saying, oh, well, I'd be better off doing that myself. And they start doing all the work in the business, and they start neglecting sales. So the key revenue improvement strategy in any business must be that the best person you have in your business for sales must be selling all the time, but they're not. If you go to 10 different businesses tomorrow, you'll see that the key, the key man is putting out the rubbish, he's opening up, he's locking up, he's doing all the bookkeeping, all tasks that you can pay lower costs, uh, or lower, lower wages to rather than sales. So focus on sales. The cash gap improvement strategies then I guess the main the cash gap is the difference between uh, when you pay for something uh, and when you actually sell something. Again, it's in your business. And if that gap is too big, you're, you've got responsibility to carry that debt because the bank are not taking that responsibility anymore. So I guess the main cash gap improvement strategies are renegotiating with your suppliers and improving your own cash collect collection strategies. I was with a client today who um, is, will turn over about 200,000 euro this year yet he's owed 260,000 euro. 
and he hasn't made a phone call for the past month to collect any of that money. He's just hoping it's going to come in. And that money is owed from maybe one year ago and two years ago. Yet he's very busy scraping a living at the moment. So the key thing there is to get him collecting money and ring you up and ask him for his money which is owed to him. That, that's a cash gap improvement strategy is to go after your money. And more importantly, when he takes on new business now, he must position the people that they're going to be paying a lot quicker than they would have before. In fact, they're going to be paying up front or when the job is done on production of invoice. The whole days of giving credit, especially for service-based businesses, is over. It's fine giving credit when you're selling a product that someone else is selling on. But when you're, getting, when you're selling a, a product or service where it, it's at the end of its road, there's no need uh, for credit as much as people give at the moment. The other thing is obviously renegotiating, renegotiating with your suppliers. They're in the same situation as you, so that's the trickier one to do, but you can negotiate with them. And even if you can get two or three or four more days um, every month, you know, that will make a difference to your cash gap as well. So it's all about cash flow and you know, a, a difference in cash flow and, or, or, and the other cash uh, um, uh, strategy is looking down at all the costs in your business and say which are needed. Very often people are, are accruing costs in their business or there are small costs in their business that are there every month and they're not necessary. Looking at where you're buying stationery, why you're buying stationery, looking at who your utility providers are, renegotiating rents if you're paying rent. Looking at every single cost in your business and say, do I need that right now in my business? Because every tenor you save, that in some businesses, that's as good as 100 euro in sales. So, but again, it shouldn't be the complete focus. You should be focusing on sales and cost reduction at the same time. That's a very good, Derek, there, what you said there. I mean, just to add to that on the, on the cash gap, a lot of it is um, kind of being open for business e even when you're asleep. And what I mean by that is, is the internet there. Um, there's a couple of websites that people want to take them down, and, and you've all heard of these, but they're actually easier to use than what you think. I mean, one of them is PayPal.com. So no matter what you're selling, people can pay you day or night, 24 hours a day, via credit card or via their PayPal account. It's, it's especially popular with eBay use, youth, which you know, which is old hat now. I mean, it's a massive success. But um, making it easy for people to pay you is a huge part of that. Uh, I know you don't like the discounts, and neither do I, but uh, I do have a policy, which I borrowed from Cement Roadstone, that if people pay you very quickly, they get, it doesn't have to be a percentage off, like as big as 10%, but they get a significant amount of euros off for early payment. Now, that's okay, but if it goes over that, then you're adding on the interest rate, and then even if you are adding on the interest rate, that there's um, a facility whereby they can pay you over a predetermined period in lump sums, you know, so you have your standing order set up or you have what's called a fee finance provider and there is actually quite a few of those, KBC and even AIB, if they last much longer are still doing that and that's something that will come up again. But a lot of it anyway is just making it easy for people to pay you closes the gap as opposed to the electrician going out to the job and the person saying I don't have my checkbook but the electrician having the facility and this is cheap stuff to take laser or credit card there on the job. And this just for the quick call out to fix the light in the bathroom for the bed and breakfast. So just thought I'd add that one in there. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, we move swiftly on now to the four tools to assist you in your journey. Now these are very simple tools, and I guess the first one is a tool that we've been using all our lives, or some of us stopped using it the minute we finished our leaving cert or our junior cert or whenever we left school. And that's the tool of education. We have to continually educate ourselves, and we have to educate ourselves on how money works, what money can do for us, and how we actually use it to improve our whole um, existence. It is absolutely critical that you educate yourself on, 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 on finance and understand it and embrace it. Too many people leave the whole money thing to the Kevins of the world, to the me's of the world, and they say, I don't understand money, I just want to do my business. But we're saying spend as much time as you can on um, learning and the philosophy is that the more you learn, the more you earn, okay? That's the first tool, is, is, is develop a policy of education. Read a book, attending a, a webinar like this, so thanks to all of you who are on this webinar tonight, you're trying to learn more about what to do in your personal life and in your business. And just to throw in the, the extra line there, Kevin, here again, on the education, the book a week is super, but as an accountant, I can tell you this in a one line, you know, showing someone a set of accounts, showing a business owner a set of their own accounts is like showing them last year's newspaper. 
you know, they have no interest in it. They're really only looking for looking at the now, today, and the future, like getting out of debt today, or feeding their kids, or paying off their house, or retiring early. So, yeah, you're right, Derek. You know, the more people are educated, really, an accountant shouldn't be able to tell them anything that they don't already know. Accounting is really about forecasting the future, setting the targets and bringing in the reality in line with, with what we had planned a year, a year earlier, a week earlier, a quarter earlier, whatever. So, you know, just to reinforce your point there on the education. Okay. The next uh, tool we, we use is a tool called planning. Now, if I met 20 clients in the next two weeks and I mentioned to them the whole idea of having a plan for their business, the vast majority of them, they would glaze over the thought of having to do a plan. Yet, you know, we've heard Roy Keane say that if you fail to plan, you plan, or if you plan to fail to plan, you plan to fail. And the, most people don't have a plan. So if you don't no. have a plan, if you don't have a plan, then you're going to struggle to achieve anything in the next few months. And when it comes to your personal financial planning, you have to take responsibility for that. If you if you leave all that to your financial advisor or anyone else who has a vested interest in your well-being, they are the ones that will profit from it, and not necessarily you. So you need to plan exactly where you want to be financially in your business and in your life, even just for 90 days. 90 days is 12 weeks. It's very tangible. You can set tasks um, that you can actually do every week. It's like going to the gym. But you have to start off with a plan. So if you're currently in debt to the tune of 500 euro a month, you have to set a plan about how you're going to turn that around. Okay? And if you don't do that, you know, th this, is, this is basic stuff. But without the plan, we're going to struggle. And we're going to, at the end of tonight, you know, one of the things that we're offering you is to get you started in that plan. And I'll take you through a bit more about that later on. The next tool, then, is the tool of accountability. Now, it's, very well, it's all very well uh, educating yourself and having a plan. But if you don't share your plan with someone else who's going to hold you accountable to do that plan, who's going to be your unreasonable friend, then, again, you're going to let yourself off because you're always going to be easier on yourself. So what we suggest, and, and we would suggest it because we're coaches, we, we're saying get yourself an accountability coach. It could be your spouse, it could be a friend, as long as they're unreasonable, or it could be someone else that, that actually cares about your well-being as well. Now, no one should care about it as much as you, but accountability must be there if you're going to succeed and kind of push through the pain barrier. Because you are where you are at the moment, because you're in a certain level of comfort. It might be doing your head in, it might be stressful, but you, you wouldn't be there if it was that uncomfortable. And what we're saying is, if you have a plan that's going to take you out of that, you need someone to help you push you through. With that, um, added on to that, if you continue to work your plan, you, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get you into the, the habit of doing and uh, implementing the strategies on your plan. What we're talking about is routine. What we're talking about is repetition. And you have to keep doing it for about 21 days before it becomes a habit. So if part of your plan is to do your budget every day and write down what you spend every day, you have to do that for about 21 days before it becomes a habit and you start to do it normally. I did that exercise back in August as I was doing a 100-day financial plan. And I thought myself that, um, well, I don't really spend any money during the week or the month. I, you know, I just take you know, enough money for petrol and enough money for the odd road toll or sandwich. At the end of the month, I'd spend €1,000 on this and that and I couldn't actually put my finger on what it was. It was all unnecessary spend, apart from the petrol to get the car from here to there. But at the end of the day, you know, you'd be surprised at how much money gets frittered away. And that money would have been the difference between success and failure. So what I'm saying is we need to develop new habits, new routines. We need to share our plan with someone who's got to hold, hold us accountable, but make sure the plan is rock solid. And the way you can do that is by giving yourself a good education about how to get yourself out of the mess. And what we're going to do at the end is we're going to put you on that role to develop your whole education strategy. Do you want to add anything to that, Kevin? I'm, no, I'm, I'm all excited after hearing all that, Derek. You did a real okay. motivational speech. <laughs> except, except for the Roy Keane bit. I mean, he's oh, okay. to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> Good man, you, you okay. would use the wrong guy. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Okay, so what we do is the, the main thing then is I suppose they're the tools we need to use. They're, they're, these are these are not these are not kind of implements. They're just kind of uh, I guess basics: education, planning, accountability, and habit. They're, they're the tools we just started. Okay, the things that you can actually implement tonight. Okay, Kevin. Do you want to well, the, the hang on now. The process of awareness, take responsibility. Yeah. 
the, I mean, it's all about death reduction. You know, I was just, I was just looking at your words there. You kind of changed the the sequence where I was going, but uh, it, it is the same thing. The two areas to go at: wealth acceleration and death reduction. They're they're not independent of each other. You know, every euro you pay off your off what you owe. If you add up what you own, and add up what you owe, you know, hopefully you own more than what you owe. And in Ireland right now, and beyond Ireland, uh, certainly seems to be worldwide nearly. Everyone seems to owe. A, uh, more than what they own because their house, most houses seem to have been sold in the last seven years apparently and then the ones that weren't sold, people have moved up or, or traded up or whatever way they've done it, but certainly the level of debt ha has gone up exponentially in the last five years and uh, with massive drop in values, people owe more than what they own. So the only way you're going to get wealthy again, again is by getting rid of the debt, uh, no matter what it takes. So okay. every euro paid off the debt increases your wealth by one euro. Very simple when, when I put it like that. So on the wealth acceleration, there's two areas you go. You need to increase what you're bringing in by 10%, and you need to increase what you're paying off by 10%. And without getting too much into detail, we've quite a number of clients on this, and I met one of them this week. Now, she's in a PAYE job. She's not a fool with her cash, and um, just simple things, you know. I'll give you a couple of easy ones. If you're saving money in the bank at a 1% interest rate and you're borrowing money for your car at a 9% interest rate, okay, so you're saving at 1% and you've that left aside and you're borrowing at 9%. This, I, I can, to be blunt, you, sh you should take out the savings and pay off the loan, okay, or pay off part of the loan. They're the simple ones straight off. But to increase your wealth or, or increase your income by 10% is much easier than people think because you've outlined a lot of it already, Derek broadly and not in detail, but it, it is right there in their day-to-day -day business. And uh, paying off your debts or paying down your loans in the right way, I can, I, I'll get straight to the point. You start with those credit cards, you get rid of the likes of Sky and use that money to pay off your credit card a bit quicker. Um, you get into the detail of getting rid of the lease on the car or the loan on the car. You don't borrow for your holidays. You don't borrow for the new TV or put the city on HP. All that stuff has to be tackled straight away. and there's no tax breaks on that type of debt. So you might be paying 100 euros a month, or say the 60 euros a month you mentioned there on Sky. By the time you earn that 60, you've got to bring in about 100 to end up with 60 these days, you know. So um, it's not really 60 a month. It's costing you 100 to pay that 60. And okay. so you get rid of that personal stuff first. So that's the first two parts of the big acceleration. And it's literally tackling it, like not next week or next year. You need to make the decision now that say, right, a month from now, a year from now, five years from now, I intend to be out of debt, no matter what it takes. It's never easy, but it's always possible. The, 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 the main thing you've covered there, Kevin, thanks, is that, that you know, it's to be very aware of where your money is going. Take responsibility for it, and back to the education. Make tough decisions. We, we, we are repeating ourselves, because we feel this, the most important thing you can do is to make the decision that's best for you and your business. Too many people are concerned about what other people think of them. And our, our philosophy is that what other people think of you is none of your business. Your business is you and your family and doing what's best for them yeah, from a financial point of view. So, and then the, ma the main thing is to get started. I phoned up five people today and, uh, because we're, we're continually marketing in, in action code. I phoned up five people today and each of them told me that they, they, uh, they want me to call them back after Christmas. Now in each of their cases, their businesses aren't linked to Christmas at all. They don't have a peak in sales, but they're using it as an excuse not to do anything. Now that, that's that's the, that's where a lot of people are at. They, they want, and ap, if I phone those same five people after Christmas, they'll tell me to call back after Easter, and they'll tell me to call back after the summer holidays, and they'll tell me to call back after the August October bank holiday because they keep putting things off. If you make a decision not to do anything, that's a decision as well, and that's where most people most people are stuck right now. And they're wrapped up in the media frenzy that is the bailout without doing anything about their own situation. They need to be working on their own bailout. Okay. It'd be great if we get the old bailout, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's the easiest way out of debt, guys, by the way, you know, the bailout. But anyway, sure, that's not really a, a bailout. It's just more okay. debt, that's all it is. The, um, so I guess just, uh, go on. Sorry, Derek, there. Um, just a major one here, actually, just on the, on the debt thing. I see you've it up there on the screen, too. We spoke about it last night. I didn't mean to come across you. Protecting your assets. 
just in, in this whole debt reduction, you know, getting yourself out of personal debt and out of, you know, business debt, which is kind of good debt, that's not as important to be out of that, but you certainly want to have the business paying its way and giving you a good living and bringing in money whether you, you're there or not. For protecting your assets, um, not going to focus on it here, but take a huge note of that because we do see that people who have gone insolvent, who have gone broke, they're having their pensions seized. They're having the houses taken off them. They're putting whatever they can into their wife and kids' name. And, you know, that's, if I was advising them, I'd be advising them the same way. It mightn't sound right, but what would you do? You know, you can't end up on the street. So um, the whole protecting your assets in a way that suits you, as opposed to trying to dodge from people, is a, a vital part of any program, you know. So I know Chris will have a little note out about that. But um, never lose sight of that. And, and, uh, but don't do like the guy in T-Rex did. He broke up with the wife. This is the guy there from the band T Rex. They were back in the yeah. in the early 70s. Those were the big hits, and uh, broke up with the wife. And the lawyers advised him and said, "You don't want the wife taking all of the royalties from your records because you're a big, rich rock star." And uh, so he said, "Fine." So they put it into a trust out in the Cayman Islands, actually, where, funny enough, I used to work. He 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 died of I think it was drugs or a car crash, something very sudden, and um, it, it it was no longer in his name. It was in the name of the trust. So it, it didn't belong to him, so it didn't form part of his estate, and, and he's, he's one son today. And uh, the son doesn't get any money out of the trust. The wife never got a thing out of it, and it's owned by faceless people out there, and no one knows where all the millions of millions are. So so you can go too far with the protection of assets too, you know. Very good. So the, the, I think the, 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 this part of the thing is about the fact that both Kevin and I are professionals who work with people to keep them on track financially. We offer them debt reduction options. We offer them wealth acceleration programs, which I'm just going to give you an example of next. Um, the whole cash flow improvement initiative, that, that starts off with the initial focus and a simple cash flow forecasting spreadsheet. The whole idea of tax planning, you know, understanding that every person pays tax, every business is going to pay tax. You can't ignore it. It's not going to go away. They'll chase you down. So, so don't, 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 be, don't spend the VAT every time it comes in, which, which people get into the habit of doing because they think it's there and they, they'll, they'll, it'll buy them a few months. This is a habit thing. So again, working with a person who can explain how tax works and how it can work for you or against you. But that's what, that's, uh, that, that that's what we do with clients every day of the week. And we're talking these sort of, this sort of language with them every day of the week to keep them on track. So the, I guess the, the question at this point in time is, are you serious about doing something about your personal debt? And do you want to reduce your debt? And do you want 497 worth of help for you and your business tonight? That's really why we're here. We want to offer the people who've taken the time to attend the seminar um, some, uh, not free resource, it's a resource that's worth a serious amount of money, but we're going to give it as a reward to those people who actually want to, to, who want to, to speak to us. Now, before we do that, I'm just going to give you an example here of, uh, I was working with a client recently who uh, wanted to go on the debt reduction program. And when we analyzed all their debt, if you can see the screen, when we analyzed all their debt, they had one point, nearly 1.2 million worth of debt. And they were currently paying out nearly 6,700 6, 6, euro, this was, per month in repayments. And at that level of repayment, it was going to take them 45 years to pay off all of their debt. So at that time, they would have paid out nearly 1.8 million in um, repayments. So you can see there, 45 years, and this person was, was way over 40, so they were never going to get out of debt in their lifetime at their current rate of uh, repayment. And if you can see the amount they have to repay. Now, when we work with them, we put in place a debt elimination plan. And by doing that, by looking at simple things, like you know where they're wasting money, where they could put extra money into repayments, we could bring that 45 years down to 18 years and seven months. And that would save them automatically 319,000 euro in interest payments. Now, what we propose after that in terms of wealth acceleration is that if you continue to invest that same repayment level, so if you take your 6,700 euro and you start to invest it then properly using uh, proper strategies and, pro and basing it on proper education, if you invest it for the following 18 years, you would build a, a net real wealth of nearly 8 million. Yeah, and that's just based on investing in 6,700 a month at a rate of 8% over 26 years. So the, in total over 45 years, you'll build a nest egg of 7 million instead of just paying off the debt that you had occurred at the beginning. So that's the difference uh, between getting out of debt, but if you combine getting out of debt with wealth creation as well, 
then you get a real uh, kicker. But no one understands this because they don't take the time and they leave their full responsibility for their debt in the hands of people who have vested interests who are making commission on sales of products to them. What we're saying is educate yourself. Start with your own education. Okay, so what I want you to do right now is if, if you want, we're, we're, restric we're restricted uh, in that we can only help a certain number of people. Okay, but as we're all aware, the current economic climate has presented significant challenges for business owners and for people alike. And the government, the IMF, the Eurozone, they're not the solution to our current difficulties. The solution lies with us as small business owners. We're the drivers of the economy, and it's successful people that will drive Ireland forward. And Kevin and I want to do our bit to assist you and your business. So for everyone in this call, we want to offer two, uh, a two-hour coaching session worth 497 euro. That's a, that can be two hours with Kevin, two hours with me, or whatever way you want to work it. But the whole idea is that we want to give this to you as a thank you for coming on the call. During the coaching session, we get a better understanding of you and your challenges and come up with some strategies and, more importantly, some quick wins to help you and your business immediately. Now, in any week, we have a limited number of hours that we can give to these free consulting sessions, but we want to offer them to everyone. They're on a first-come, first-served basis. So what we want you to do is we want you to register your interest just by firing me off an email this evening. Include your name, your phone number, and we'll call you to set up a session at a time that suits you. So the main thing is we want to work with you on your debt reduction and wealth acceleration. That's the key focus of tonight's uh, uh, program. And it might just start off with a simple plan and a bit of accountability. That may be all you need to get you started. But what it will require from you is commitment and a resolve to actually make it happen over an extended period of time. That's the main thing. And that's, that can be you can hold yourself accountable, get someone to hold you accountable, but we can help you get you started. So the main thing is, if you're serious about getting out of debt in your personal life and in your business, I'd strongly advise you to take advantage of this offer and register your interest now. We have limited time uh, uh, left tonight, so what I want to do is I want to open it up right now to um, some questions that you may have. And I see there's some questions coming in there right now, so what we'll do is I'll read out the questions that come in, and maybe Kevin or I will, will answer them as best we can. So again, send in the email now, and I'll come back to it at the end. But just as an example here, I've had a question here um, from someone saying, I've missed a mortgage payment. What's the first thing that I should do? Kevin, do you want to advise on that one? Okay, well, uh, if, if you've missed it, they'll actually try and take it again anyway. That's the first thing. So you don't actually have to do anything first off. So that's going against what we said. But they'll probably come back 10 days later if it's only the main retail banks and attempt to take it again. Okay, okay, so that's it. Anyway, so try, so, so, so try, and have, try, and have, try and have the money there, I guess, would be the best thing. Yeah, it, it would. I mean, these things happen. It's nothing new. Good times are bad, so that's that. But for, always remain calm. The worst that's going to happen is a letter is going to come to say, you missed a mortgage payment, send us a check. Okay? okay. So that's the second thing. So I'll just escalate okay. it slightly, though. Let's say you missed three mortgage payments. Okay? You've certainly got three letters. You need to be in touch to say um, why you've missed them, when you intend to restart them, and if you aren't on, if you're on repayment, at least try and go down to interest only, or or some other type of arrangement that you're paying them something. But um, answer the letters when they come. Okay. Okay. Another question here from uh, from Mike. Uh, the bank wants to take away my business overdraft facility, but I need it. What can I do? Okay. The there's a couple, there's a couple of things there. One is how big is it? Um, but let's let's go to the main point here. Why do you need the business? overdraft in the first place. Okay, they want to take it away. That's quite normal. They're trying to reduce their debt. Um, you want to because you don't have uh, enough money to keep going without it. Why don't you have enough money? It could be back to what we said earlier is on the cash gap. Uh, we need to get our money in and we need to start doing deals to get it. I mean, even if someone owes you 10000 and they can't pay it, but they can pay four, say, Jesus, if, if things are that tight, take the four and say from now on it's cash up front. That's it. But at least you get four in, you get yourself out of overdraft, and you push on with, with your, you, your lesson learnt, but you've been burnt, you know, so desperate times can, you know, might force that type of thing, but money owed to you, not collected, isn't worth a thing to you. So it, the real problem is you're not getting paid for the service or job or products you're doing. That's, where, that's what needs to be addressed long term. So the, the best thing I would do with a bank who's trying to take it away is say, give us three months, and we won't even need that overdraft, and get going on the real stuff, which is making sales, making profitable sales, and collecting the money as and when it should be collected. 
Okay. If there's anyone else with any questions, just type them in onto the panel there, and we 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 get them. Uh, we've got a few minutes left for questions. I have another question here. Uh, very simple one. I need to get some cash into my company now. What can I do? Um, we've covered that before. I guess the best uh, advice I can give is focus on the quick wins. The quick win is cash collection. If you're owed money, you know, get on it. Make a disciplined approach to try and collect your cash every day. The second one is increase sales, and that's basically doing more work. And a, an example I, or a phrase I use with a lot of clients is, if you show me your calendar, I'll tell you how successful you're going to be. And what I'm saying there is that if people actually looked at the amount of time they spent on sales in any one week, it wouldn't be enough. So discipline yourself to spend more time on sales. It's a good, and, and, and make those sales cash sales. Another quick way of getting cash into your business would be to have a fire sale of stuff that isn't moving. If you've got stock sitting there, it's costing you money to have it there. Turn that into cash. Even if you have to turn it into the same cash you, you paid out for it, yeah, and buy something you can actually sell more of at a better margin. So there's a number of different uh, quick cash flow strategies, and if anyone wants them, uh, a list of them, I've got about 25 on a list, and uh, all they need to do is fire me off an email to that email address below. Okay, there's a question uh, from Steve here. It says, uh, which is the best uh, business bank to use? Oh, God, is there any left? The, which is the best business bank? The only one left at the moment, realistically, apparently, is uh, Bank of Ireland, because we're all used to thinking of FAIB and Bank of Ireland. Um, however, uh, ACC, I know, they used to be the killers. They're not the killers anymore. ACC Bank are lending, and so are KBC Bank as well, all owned by non-Irish entities. Um, they only tend to lend, though, to people who are involved in renewable energy um, or organic farming. Okay, uh, or something in the the cash industry, whatever that is. So I asked them, is that like pubs and shops? And they said, actually, technically it is, but you know, you, you want to have a good business, you know, in this climate for them, right now. Okay. But that's that's two straight off ACC and KBC. Okay, there's a, another question here now as well. It says, um, I've got a fixed amount of money coming in every month, but I've got more going out, and I I, I just can't seem to. I I don't have access to any other stream of income. What should I be doing? So I guess to answer that question, I suppose it's in, the first thing you need to do is take advantage of the free session there because there are things that you can be doing. And I guess my, to be brutally honest, the first thing you need to do is to be honest with yourself about you know, there, there is there might only be an extra 10 or 20 euro a week, but we need to find that to try and uh, recover the situation slightly. But I, I, I'd urge you, first of all, to take advantage of the free consultation that exists. But uh, more importantly, We've got, to, we've got to look at every bit of money that's coming in and out and look at ways of manipulating it, but we will find a way. Kevin, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I would. I mean, let's go back to the second job. Um, 15, 20 years ago, all of us were working like a day job and a night job. You know, work on the bar on weekends, or people were bouncing on doorways. They were working as taxi drivers. You know, people got into this thing of uh, a weekend away every, every month in, you know, the last five years. Uh, two big holidays a year, three cars outside the door, um, the teenage daughter going to school as a car. You know, people got too much into that. You know, the, you know, don't, uh, as I say, be honest with yourself. Sometimes the daughter can't have the new car, or the new set of tires, or the new set of braces. And um, but the second job. I mean, I'm looking for someone to, as you say, pay someone like nine euros an hour to wash the windows. And six months ago, I used to see in a local department store, there was eight staff in there, and they were still employing someone to wash the windows on the ground level outside the door. Yet the eight staff were sitting out there. You know, so there's simple savings and cutbacks to be had. But the second job, I mean, I didn't even go over and wash the windows myself for the 20 quid I would have got paid for it, you know? Yeah. Common okay, I have, a question in here. I have another question here. I have, a, I have a previous business loan that I'm now paying personally. I'm in arrears, but I'm in communication with the bank. I'm paying what I feel is I can afford the bank would like me to pay more, but I'm saying I can pay. I can't pay that yet. Will this affect my credit rating in the future? Um, yes, it will. Okay, it depends what you signed. Okay, I'll, I'll actually jump back a small bit. Depends what was signed uh, at the start. A lot of these loans were given out uh, at a very hectic time, and they weren't properly signed up by the bank. So the first thing I do is I'll get a hold of that agreement and get your accountant or solicitor, or just have a look at yourself and see what what you signed. You know. Um, credit rating, let's be blunt about it, you know, it's not worrying people at the moment because there is no credit. It will come back to, back down the road, but um, the main thing that, that will force credit to happen, I think, in the next 10 years, is unless you have money on you yourself, you won't get any loan. 
You could have the worst credit rating in the world, but if something's going to cost 10000 and you've got a 5000 deposit, you'll get the loan somewhere. If you've got a good credit rating and you've got no cash in the bank because you never borrowed anything, you just won't get the money. Okay. Okay. Very good. We're, we're coming to the top of the hour. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it up, and I'm going to encourage you again. You know, if you want to talk to both Kevin and myself about how to get out of debt and get into wealth and get yourself on that program and that road to recovery, you know, there are tools there, there's help there. But you need to talk to the, the right people, and you've got to make some right decisions that affect you today. So send the email now to, to myself at Derek O'Dwyer at actioncoach.com, and we'll get back in touch with you and, and, and try and help you to get set on your way. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for attending. Uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Kevin as well for uh, participating with me. Um, he's an expert at what he does. And uh, we hope to run these uh, webinars uh, on a regular basis on different topics. So if there's any topic you want to discuss or you want to cover in one of these webinars, just fire me an email as well. And I'm sure we can cover it. As long as we're to making money and making you wealthier, we can cover it. So with that, um, I'll close it up. Kevin, do you want to say anything, any parting words of wisdom? No, I, I've often um, listened in on these webinars. They always get one or two items out of them. I hope people did likewise. If you get one or two items out of it, it was worthwhile. It's worthwhile. And even if you didn't, maybe just email your comments to us. Um, take a look at my website sometime too, kevinbarry.ie. There's a few bits and pieces as, as, uh, that you can just read yourself and pick up some hints on, you know. So thanks very much for listening in. Okay. Thank you all very much. Good night. Good night.